All right, thank you very much for that, Jackie Heinrich. Uh, this just in, too, from the Boston Globe. It's editorial board now, the latest newspaper to say maybe it's time for the president to at least suspend his campaign. Other major newspapers, including the New York Times and the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, have said for him to end it outright and open it up to an open convention. Reaction now from Robert F. Kennedy Jr., the independent presidential candidate. Uh, Robert, that's not t too far from your original neck of the woods, Boston. Yet another paper saying it's time to, to call it a day. What do you what do you make of all of this? I think uh, you know. Uh, I think what happened the other night at the debate was that a lot of Americans uh, finally understood what the, the media has been hiding, what people around the, in the White House has been hiding, which is the executive. Our country is probably not running our country. That he um, that his he has cognitive issues. Um, that that are going to impair him, and you know what I think we all need to worry about is the scenario where he gets the the wake up call at three o'clock in the morning and has to be pushed down the corridor and make that decision within six minutes. That's going to affect all of humanity, and you know we deserve and we we need. We're the most powerful country in the world. We need a, a president who's on his feet 24 hours a day now. You know, the, 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 the White House, what Kareem said, um, or John Pierre said, was that he had a bad 90 minutes, and which is, you know, anybody can have a bad 90 minutes. Uh, but if that's true, then he needs to dispel that very aggressively, not just with a single interview on, on CBS to a very, very friendly reporter, George Stephanopoulos. By coming out and doing unscripted events without teleprompters, talking to voters, doing town halls, doing debates with people who are going to challenge him so that Americans can actually assess whether he's capable of running the country, his insistence that he's okay and the insistence of this close coterie that surrounds him and his personal doctor should not be convincing to anybody. He needs to. He is needs it convincing to, take the bull to your Lawrence family, Robert? Is it convincing to your family? Overwhelmingly, the, your, your, your fellow family members, your sisters and brothers, and extended family are supporting Joe Biden. If he steps out of the race, uh, is, it, is it possible that they throw their support behind you? I don't know. I haven't talked to them about it. I know. You know, the only thing I've talked, the only feedback I've got is, um, and I'm going to be at the Cape next weekend with a lot of them, hmm. but on the family list, sir, uh, people were very, very disturbed. The most adamant supporters of Biden um, in my family are, you know, were saying this is embarrassing, using the word embarrassing, and um, how None of them knew that he had these issues before, Robert? Is this all a surprise to them that we've seen signs of this before? Do you think they were that well hidden from even, you know, uh, your own family members who presumably are quite close to the president? I well, I mean, they're close to the president, in meaning that they like him. They don't spend a lot of time with him nowadays since he was elected president. So, and I think... I mean, for me, I was watching his performance on, you know, all these other debates, which are recycled, all of the gaffes that he was yeah. making and the falls and the, and the blank stares that are circulated on YouTube and then sent to my phone. I don't know if, you know, if the algorithms send them to their phones, so I don't know what they were seeing and what they weren't seeing, but, you know, because I'm... Because of the kind of things that I look at at YouTube, I was getting a lot of those, and, and it was really obvious to me that there was a problem. But I suppose you could live in a universe where none of that stuff becomes visible to you, and I don't know where they're living. And incidentally, there are a lot of family members who are supporting my campaign, uh, but the ones who are close in my, you know, the, my family, which is the the, right, the, right. the children of Robert Kennedy, there's a bunch of them who are working for the administration or who are, you know, oh, very, no, it's very quite, close it's quite to the obvious. president. I, and I, I meant me no running. disrespect to you, Robert, by saying that. <laughs> I, I do want to get your thoughts, though, on uh, this push now to say this president should do what Lyndon Johnson did and step down, that it was the right thing to do. Of course, that was 1968. 
He faced inevitable defeat. He bowed out of the race. Uh, soon after that, Eugene McCarthy, who was already campaigning, your father joined the race. We all sadly remember what happened. Uh, but the ticket did go down to defeat regardless. The party that controlled the White House lost the White House. It always happens when a party is in disarray. Are Democrats in disarray and bound to lose the White House regardless? Well, I mean, the polls indicate that President Biden will lose under any conditions. Um, but uh, I don't, you know, I li listen. The 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 cognitive issues that became very apparent during that debate to everybody. Um, I don't think anybody will say that those things are bound to get better over the next four years. And we're electing a president for four years, so uh, you know I think it's kind of crazy to to not give somebody who is you know is in better shape a chance to lead the Democratic Party and ultimately run the country. We need somebody who is who is uh, in, who is mentally competent, cognitively competent at this this critical time in history when we're you know on the brink of nuclear war with Russia when we have a 34 trillion dollar debt that's going to implode where we have the rise of BRICS which is threatening the 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 dollar is the world reserve currency where we have you know the, the record inflation since the 1970s where the first generation of kids who can't get into homes you know, we need somebody up there who's dynamic, who has a vision, who's going to change the direction, the course of this country. And uh, I just don't, I don't think anybody, I don't think anybody in the country really believes that that is going to come from President Biden. Do you regret then leaving the Democratic Party because this might be an opening? Marion Williamson, a former candidate, seems to be back in as a candidate, just in case. Um, do, do you think you sort of ostracized yourself by, by becoming a, an independent candidate and not getting a chance to take uh, advantage I, of this? I don't think that I had any choice. Um, and, you know, they, the delegates have all been assigned, and that system was, you know, I would use the word rigged to make sure that only President Biden could get elected. So I, I well, think that could I be gone now, right? Robert, and, that could be gone. Um, and now they're going to have presumably an open convention if it comes to no, that. And you're uh, quite right. We don't know yet. But if it comes to that, you could have been in the yeah, thick of but, it. But, right? the, uh, but, but the, um, the, the, the delegates are all beholden to Biden, to President Biden. So and the, most of those delegates are selected. You know, the superdelegates are selected by the big donors to the donor class to the Democratic uh, Party. And I think that within that donor class, you know, which is BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, the pharmaceutical companies, the military industrial com com complex, um, and the oil and coal companies, that's who controls the convention. And I don't think uh, that they are, uh, that they're going to want to see me. I think I threaten, I'm a, I'm a multi trillion dollar threat to those interests. And, and why I don't aren't, think you know, why, be, why aren't you, you know, benefiting uh, more from this news? I mean, obviously, Donald Trump has opened up a wider lead versus Joe Biden in these latest polls that are coming out for the New York Times, Siena College, or what have you, scoring big with independence and the like. Uh, not you. Uh, w w what is that about? I, I think a couple things. First of all, my I do benefit if you look at favorability. I'm I'm um, I have better favorability ratings than either President Biden, or President Trump. Uh, and I'll say this, um, Neil, that a lot of the polls discount independents. I'm beating President Biden and President Trump with among independents. So the Gallup poll that came out three days ago showed that 51 percent of Americans are now independents. But if you look at the polls, the way that they weight those polls, they, some of them only give 20 percent uh, to independents. Today, 23 percent, according to the Gallup poll, 23 percent of Americans say they're Democrat, 25 percent Republican, and 51, between 51 and 52 percent, independent. So I'm beating them in that cohort. And I, and I, my you got to get on more rate, ballots, right? You got to get them. on more ballots. I, I, I count I'm seven or eight all... states that you're on now. You were optimistic about <laughs> getting on all 50. I don't have the latest figures available, so I apologize. Where do you stand in that? Uh, I'll be on all 50 states within three weeks. Really? 
So, and and the, the reason I'm already on more than half the states, they, I already, let me put it this way so you understand, I have enough signatures to get on the ballot in more than half the states. I just have to hand them in. But the states won't accept them. They won't, they won't allow me on the ballot till the end of August because they don't, because of the way their process works. So it would look to you that I'm now the only on the ballot in nine states. But actually, we've done 99% of the work right so, now. So bottom line, Robert, just to understand this, we will I, I, be on. I'm sorry to jump on you. You're saying you will be on all 50 state ballots by Election Day. Oh, yeah, by, by August. We'll be on all of we'll, Four weeks from now, we'll be on the ballot in every state. All right. Now, some states and others, you, you, you poll well over 10 percent and a couple at 15 percent. But you know what happens there? The, it, invariably, Robert, they say, well, goes that, that, that that's the spoiler role coming out, the, the, that you can't win, but you could tip it to. And the best guess seems to be Donald Trump, because you'll take votes away from Joe Biden. You've heard this constantly, but it's getting a lot of attention now if Joe Biden doesn't run and what impact uh, you would have in a race, let's say Kamala Harris does. Your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, let me say this. In all the polling that's been done, that's looked at head-to-head -head races, I do better than any other candidate. So if I was left alone in a head-to-head -head race with President Trump, I win. If I'm left alone in a head-to-head -head race against President Biden, I win by I win 39 states. He only wins 11, so I win in a landslide. In a three-way race, people are not voting for the person they want. They're voting out of fear that either President Trump or President Biden are going to get elected. Well, my job and my challenge over the next four months is to get Americans to vote out of hope, out of inspiration, rather than voting out of fear. And, you know, you don't know and I don't know what's going to happen if President Biden gets out of this race. Um, I, it's going to be—we're going to be living in a topsy-turvy world that's going to be very, very interesting for you, for me, for everybody. Uh, but, you know, I think that there's opportunities for me, for Americans, to, uh, to reassess the race. And, and in every poll that's done— if my favorability ratings are better than President Biden or President Trump, so people want to vote for me. There's also, you know, if there's a contingency election, which there's a good chance this year, um, we think that, that we win a contingency election as well. So let me ask you about this. As things stand now, um, there is another debate coming up in September. Uh, we don't know who will be there. You know, Donald Trump presumably will be there. We don't know if Joe Biden will be there. Um, there's every reason to think, you know, uh, Donald Trump, given his lead in the polls and given his experience, wouldn't want to bother with another debate. But would you want to be in that debate? And if it were with Donald Trump or whomever the Democrat is, and, and, and what criteria would you be able to argue in your favor that would make it be on that stage? Well, if the if the presidential debating commission was running the debate, I will be on the stage. But you know, they, this is the first election in history for the first 25 years after for the first 25 years of president. My my uncle's debate, President Kennedy's debate, was the first televised presidential debate. Or 25 years after that, the debate was run by the Women's uh, League of Conservation, Women's League of Voters. And that was a bipartisan organization. It was trusted by people. And then they invented the, um, the Presidential Debate Commission, which is also bipartisan. If they had run the debate this time, I would have been on the stage. In fact, CNN invented rules we now know because The Washington Post reported the private conversation between the Trump campaign, the Biden campaign, and CNN. CNN illegally created rules that were specifically designed to keep me off the stage. However, even under those rules, I qualified much more than the other two candidates because under the rules, you had to be on enough ballot, or you had to be on enough ballots to get 270 electoral votes. Well, I was on enough enough ballots to get about 200. I have enough signatures to get 343. But they wouldn't let me on the ballot. But mm. President oh. Biden and President Trump weren't on any ballots. And so I qualified. And then CNN designated 12 polling companies and said I had to score 15 percent 
in four polls among those 12 companies. And I did that, including the CNN poll. I got, I think, 16 percent. The bottom CNN line, poll. you weren't at that debate for whatever uh, but reason. They, but and, they, and you hope to be yeah, the, uh, you hope to be at the ABC one, right? That you're, you're hoping for that. Yeah, I, okay. hope, I hope to be. Got it. Robert, always good talking to you. Thank you very much. Uh, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. still very much uh, an active and involved independent presidential candidate. Click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You won't get it anywhere else.